because it's totally impossible. It's always Christmas. This is a Tuesday that feels like a Monday, and all a Monday we like being called. Positive. Come on. Let's be positive. Just stop right there. No negativity. Let's be positive. LBP. Let's be positive. It's a warm welcome back to the program. Matt Gunn joins us. And being positive as we can up here because, you know, uh, some people, as always, Matt, and you've been in these situations before, dude, are wearing it real bad. And if you're not, well, you just think you can't really moan about nothing, can we? Oh, Martin, I'm just looking at the images, uh, horrific. And, you know, we were flooded down here and I almost lost my business underwater, but didn't. And I just feel, I felt grateful since then that, you know, it didn't continue. Uh, what we're watching on the on the TV pictures and uh, on the internet and the, the, the images, the visuals, um, it's just phenomenal, isn't it? That's what happens in a city when you get that much rain. Where's it supposed to go? Yeah, well, and nowhere look, to soak in. Yeah, and look, and they can the mass media can get around because they didn't want Wayne Brown in any way, and they can bitch and they can moan and they can gear their questions to try and sort of you know, get them aggravated or elicit some kind of response or answer. The fact of the matter is, is we know our infrastructure is stuffed, but I don't know how much better it could it, it could have could have coped with all of that rain, given the amount of rain, if it was in a better state anyway, if you understand what I'm going. Well, I, I mean, get yourself a cup and start filling it up. And then it's full. And where does the water go? Well, you've got to tip well, it out, It's mate. just got to spill out wherever else it is. Yeah. And then as these suburbs are built and they're trying to expand the size of the city, every time they put a rooftop and a house down 120 square metres or something, there's 120 square metres of land that can't soak water up. Then they put in the driveways and the curb and guttering and the roads, and you've got kilometres and kilometres, square kilometres of land now where the water has nowhere to soak in. So the bigger the city gets without the infrastructure underneath, you're always going to have a disaster. Mm-hmm. To think that the water can't go anywhere, um, what, what are people supposed to do? Now, Wayne Brown, he's, he, it's Wayne, isn't it? Yeah. Um, old Brown, he, he's... He, uh, look... He's, he's, he's clearly not the people's mayor, even though he clearly was voted in by the people. He seems to be pretty disinterested in communication with his people, but w- what could he have done? Maybe they could have done it quicker, but at the end of the day, what is there was there under Phil Goff. Yeah. 12 months ago, it would have been Phil Goff that was unable to do it properly. Yeah. I mean, that's, and, and, and well said, yeah. and that's what we actually need to say about it, because that's, so give us, so, you know, we, we we haven't really even heard about what the South Island has been wearing. I mean, what's, what's it been like there? Hot. Yeah. We've been up around 30 degrees the it's, last few days. It's how just starting to cloud it's, over and cool down now. It's bloody ridiculous, isn't it? Does that mean that, I keep asking this question, when you get to 30 degrees, you do go swimming in your lakes, don't you, even if it's in a wetsuit? No, I'm not. A, I don't go in the lakes. I don't okay. go in the lakes. Right. I don't, it's too cold. It's still too cold in the lakes. I just splash myself down with a bit of water and stand in the breeze, hopefully. Okay. But I tell you what, it's got. We, we are all. We're most of the district down here. Most of the region: Otago, Waitaki, South Canterbury. Uh, fire alert now. Oh. I mean, you guys are being flooded, and uh, we've gone from maybe the greenest, wettest spring that we've had in ten years to um, everything's just dead and brown. Wow. It, 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 it's incredible. It's incredible the difference between, you know, what is only an hour and a bit flight from here to you. It, it's mind-blowing. Plus, also, that's tinder dry. You get the wind as well. That whips up, isn't it? I mean, I've, so this is a red flag fire warning you got down there. And I remember I was talking to you. It was only a couple of years ago, and it was, you know, we could, I mean, it used to be called Oh How People, O-H-A-U, or mm. Ho is what it is. But that whole town burnt to the ground. Yeah, and that and, and, and that is just so entrenched in people's minds how quickly things can change. Um, that um, now, a couple of years on, because we had two big fires, there was one up near Mount Cook, uh, the Mount Cook Road along Lake Pukaki, and then that one at um, Ohau. Ohau. Um, you, you don't forget it, you know, especially when you know all these people or a large percentage of them that lost their homes. Um, it hits home when you, when you know... Uh, all the individuals that have been affected and you see it go on for a couple of years you know, every time there's a spark or a bit of smoke, those people get nervous as hell mm-hmm. and you know, that's what you'd expect right? So yeah, it's tinder dry down here. Look Martin, what people don't realise is that the tussock that grows down here and across the country it's available to burn uh, 
at, at 90% burn rate 100% of the time. Right. So even when, even in the middle, you know, even when it's been raining and whatnot, and um, we've had some good growth, this kind of grass is ready to go up at any moment. And of course, if it gets into the pine trees and whatnot down here, well, uh, it's no stopping it. So, yeah, it, the, the the two worlds of us and you couldn't be more different at the moment. Resurrection Distillery. Jump the man's Facebook page. Resurrection Distillery. Buy some grog from him. Let's talk about the breakers, mate, yeah. because you used to call the breakers. You did a brilliant job calling the breakers, and I know that they are a team that are dear to you. We had Modi Mayor on the program. I always find, I've only interviewed him two or three times, find him a fascinating interview because he's one of those blokes, Matt, and you've done this a lot when you're doing sport as well. Such a refreshing thing. When you ask a coach, he's not fudging any answers. He doesn't tolerate dumb questions. You've got to be careful with him. You've got to prep well. I like the challenge of interviewing him. Yeah, real thinker, isn't he? Yeah. And willing to engage in a conversation, which is something that um, makes the job of interviewing Easier, but also more difficult, because you don't you don't want you don't want to show up to a guy like that and be shown up. No, you want to be able to have a decent conversation with him. But think about the background. A lot of these Israeli guys, you know, they've been involved in the military. They're half men, yeah, and um, very disciplined. Um, but look, the breakers uh, they are right in this um, finishing third. They had the best defensive record could in the league. Could finish second, Matt. Could and finish second can... still, mate. Remember that they could finish second. They win the next. Yeah, two... that's right. It's not. It's not over there. It's not over. The season's not over yet. Um, but uh, they've got the best defensive record by, you know, like 100 shots. Um, and they've, well, they've played very well at times, and then they've been a little bit inconsistent. But there's been a lot of games they've lost that they've been right in. They haven't been pants too many times. I think it's exciting for the break, especially after what we were discussing last year yeah. about them. Who would have thought that they'd be able to come back this strong and play the way they have? And, you know, look, we talked a lot last year about them being on the road all the time. Well, maybe it is a bigger deal than we, uh, than we tended to make out. But, you know, regardless of all that, uh, they're a contender. They're absolutely capable of uh, beating any team in that competition. We saw it last weekend. Matt Gunn, let's be positive out of twice. Well, let's be positive about the fact that Campbell Johnston has come out. He's not the first gay all black. I mean, statistics would say that he's not the first gay all black. I also fear for the bloke that he's now going to be hounded and pounded by the media and that every single issue that comes up, he's going to be the go-to guy and all of that kind of stuff. Because to me, I don't know the man, but I would hope that he would want to be remembered as a rugby player because that's what his claim to fame is as opposed to his sexuality. And I do get bored with these stories. I don't get bored with the story, Matt. The more I've been thinking about it, I get bored with the media coverage of it because it just, you know, you and me know, having worked in this business for such a long time, how the people in those newsrooms react and why they write the stories they write. It is significant, isn't it, on a number of levels? Well, it's definitely significant. I mean, what I would say is I agree with you about the coverage. It's a bit clickbaity. It's a bit, uh, it's a bit deceptive. I saw All Black announces he's gay. Then I click on the story and, OK, it's true, a three-match All Black who last played in 2005. Now, I'm not the greatest at mathematics, Martin, but that's a long time it's ago. It's a generation ago. ago. It's a generation ago, mate. Yeah, it's a generation ago, mate. It's, exactly. There'll be a lot of people that won't even know who he was, and I'd have a real good hard think about it myself. Now, to say he's the, the, the first gay all black to come out, well, it would have been very significant in 2005, wouldn't it? But 18 years later... Um, what it says to me is, while people want to celebrate this news, what does it actually say about the, the game of rugby? What, 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 what does it actually say about club rooms all around New Zealand in terms of their acceptance of people for whom they are? 18 years for him to break this news, and it's groundbreaking. So maybe it is more difficult than we would like to believe. Yeah, good point. And maybe the world as a gay person isn't quite what we'd like to think we've made it. Because that's a hell of a long time, Martin, to not talk about something that intrinsically is who you are. Ah! Ah! Stop it! Get off my phone, mate. We're just having this... Is yours buzzing too, Lachlan? Yeah, yeah. Just oh, got man, it as well. Oh, man, we've this bloody emergency... What, well, you got an alert? Yeah, we've got another emergency alert. It's just happened, mate. I just... It, 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 what, it's raining again. This creeps the hell out of me that somebody has access to your phone. What else, what else are you looking at me at now, you pervert? 
Oh, yeah. Do they don't know what, they... what you do on the internet. They know anyone. Oh, but they do, mate. I'm Honestly. T- yeah, they do. They do. And I believe that, I mean, I'm so paranoid that I believe that there is a camera following me every minute of every day, mate. You know? Because I carry oh, it in my bloody is, pocket. It's called a phone. And it's looking at you. And when you every look minute. at it, it stares back, mate. There's some guy some in an office somewhere jacking off to it. Sorry. I just, oh, that's I a bit extreme, register... mate. Sorry. Well, yeah, well, I don't mind extreme. I tried to register a bank card the other day. Right. And it took me an hour and a half to confirm who I was to. <laughs> and yet, and yet, and yet, and yet the government can just take the phone list of everyone yeah. with a mobile phone yeah. and do what they want oh, with it. Crazy. All right, look, if, if, if you've just received this 5055. It's all for your benefit. Of course it's it is. It's all for your benefit. You, do you feel safer to get that alert? No. Now? No, I don't. 505 on the text. Couple of quick topics to go. Novak. So what's happening, Matt? You love your tennis. Is he going to cement himself as the greatest ever? And does that happen as soon as he takes another slam title and goes ahead of Rafa? Well, if if he isn't now already, he will be. And I've got to remove myself from the emotion of not liking him Same. for whatever reason. It yep. goes back a long time. I don't like him. But you've got to go on the numbers, I think. He's not my favourite, but emotion aside, he will win more. I just, I feel like he's still at least got a couple more in it. We yep. saw that We saw that in the final, straight sets. Um, so he's got another, at least one or two in him, right? Um, he says he certainly feels like he can keep himself going. Can he keep himself fit? I don't want to say he's the greatest. I just think it's too difficult to make it that easy. We've got players who've been great in different generations. To be great today may be easier than it was to be great back then, um, given all the technology, the training, the knowledge that we have. So you've got to remove all that, and I think you've just got to put it down to numbers. He's probably not the greatest at the moment on numbers, and so he maybe has to rack up a few more to make it definitive. I can't think of any other way you can no, do it. No, it's fine. Because I mean, you could yeah, have yeah. arguments for yeah. all players. Yeah, well, absolutely. Yeah. Couldn't you? I'm, yeah. Yeah. I'm still a Labor guy, but, mate. But, I still but, think but Labor's definitely. Mm. But, 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 you know, just he's still motivated, he says. He's still earning 30 or $40 million a year sponsorship. I think he's up to about $260 million in prize money. He's got to be ranked as one of the top five, surely. But is he the greatest? Well, that'll all come down to everybody's individual mindset, I think, because, you know, I just love the game of Federer, but I also love Bjorn Borg. Same. But I loved Ivana Visevic. I loved Becker. Yeah. Uh, it wasn't Ivana Visevic. I've totally screwed that up. Ivan Isevich. It's not bad, mate. It's not bad. It's not Ivan Isevich. And I he's loved his him. coach. I loved him. He's his coach. But, he's no big coach. But Lendl, but McEnroe, yeah. so many great players. None of them absolutely stand out in my mind that much more than the rest. They just all seem like they were great players. And does it matter who's the best? Ultimately, it doesn't. I'm going to leave you with one more question, mate. Last week, and I want to ask you this mm. question every week because I know that your, 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 your emotion and your mood about this is going to change. Your doggies, top four, top eight, how's the season going? Well, I was sitting, sitting here in the middle of the week and I sent a text out to you, top four. Yeah. Feeling confident <laughs> this week. That's it. See, that's it. I was just sitting there. I was just sitting there. I read a couple of stories and I was like, top four. Boom. That's me this week, Marty. Ask me again in a couple. Matt Gunn, always positive. Out of Twizel.